Hi guys, welcome to episode two of the Inside Line. We're on our way back to California. I'm building a new Honda Insight Land Speed Car. And I don't know if you've seen my other car, but I kind of balled it up uh, in a race out there at El Mirage in California. Anyway, the roll cage works so well that my wife has insisted that I have the same company build the new roll cage. So we're off to Auto Power Industries in San Diego, California to drop off the Insight to get a new roll cage. And while we're there, we took a look around to see some of the cool things they're doing there. Now, Auto Power Industries is well known for making roll cages, uh, and uh, we wanted to see what else they do. After that, we took a trip up to Los Angeles, uh, and uh, we had some dinner with a few friends, and while we were there, we saw a really cool looking Honda N600. Uh, this car uh, was owned by a young man, Jason Yamamoto, who works for Honda. Pretty cool car, car. I think you'll enjoy it. Last, we took a trip over to Bernardo Martinez's house. You may or may not know him. He uh, is a so Southern California racer. He's driven a lot of the Hasport cars in some of the media events. Right now, he's been working on the Honda Prelude that uh, Hasport built a few years ago that was on the cover of Honda Tuning Magazine. He's made a, quite a few changes to the car. The car is really cool looking, and he's getting ready to go back out on the track with that. So look for some more videos on that car as well. While we were there, we also took a look at one of the other cars he was working on. He's in the early stages of building a Honda C-Rex e-production car to run in SCCA. Uh, like I said, it's in the early stages. It's on a rotisserie right now. He's done some pretty cool things with the cage, and I thought we'd check that car out as well. Anyway, come along with us as we take another trip to California. <laughs> Go live while you're shooting. Really, Exception. Hi guys, uh, I'm here today with Rick White at Auto Power Industries. They're the ones that made the roll cage in my Insight that I rolled 15 and a half times. Uh, we're getting ready to build a new one, and since it worked, we're going to do it try again. Try it again. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, you don't need to test it out again. I won't test it this time. <laughs> no, but no my tests. wife insists that it be there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. So let's get a quick tour of uh, Auto Power. First, we're going to check out Rick's Honda. Really cool. This is our my my Bible project. Not, not too much Honda about it. Right. right. So what do we got here? Well, this started life as a '71 Honda uh, 600. Uh, the the Z600. The Z600 coupe. Right. Yep. And uh, we're we made it into a, a Bonneville uh, comp coupe class, and our goal is to run 300 miles an hour. 300 miles an hour. Yeah. Wow. The, uh, the record in the class is about 250, but we're, our, we're setting our goal up pretty high, and, and I, think, I think we have a good chance of doing it. That's fantastic. Yes. Now, it's uh, chop top. Yep. Uh, top you've got skirts on the back. Well, it's... it's or is uh, it just for the tire? Just, we just do it. It was... As long as the, all the body uh, lines stay the same, and chop top, everything else is the same, from firewall back, the same lines as on the 600. And I just took that out so you get the tires off. <laughs> Other than that, you'd have to pull the body off to change tires. Yeah. Wow. So we did that, but it's still that's still a Honda sheet metal right oh, there. Oh, that's fantastic. Yep. Yep. Now, to go 300 miles an hour, what kind of horsepower does it take to do that? This motor that we're going to run here is about 1,800 horsepower. So it's a, it's a blown alcohol uh, big block Chevrolet. Wow. Yeah. Uh, 1,800. That's pretty significant. I. 
the fabrication that goes in this, how, how long has this project been going on? Well, the project started probably about three years ago, mm -hmm. and my son and I are doing it, and, uh, and you know, we worked on it for about five minutes a week for about two years, okay. and uh, we looked at each other, I said, if we're ever going to do this thing, we're going to have to go to work on it. So basically, the car, working on it six or seven days a week, it took about six months to do it. Wow. Yeah. That's fantastic. It's yeah. Just, uh, just, you just got to make up your mind that you want to do it and go to work. Yeah, I had hundreds of hours into my car yeah. and it just crushed me when I when I rolled it. It was just, I was not looking forward to doing that again. But yep. uh, but I'm doing it again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know all about that kind of stuff. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. This is a little bit of machine shop back here, a mill and lane. Basically, yeah, basically our, our fab work is done back here. Uh-huh. You do a lot with the off-road trucks as well? No, not much. That's Brad's truck. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not, we really don't do too much of the off-road business. Yeah. We got a couple of welding stations here. And uh, all the fixtures. Right? Yeah, all the welding. The originals. Those are like originals that were made in the car. Uh -huh. And so I can double check my fixtures every once in a while to make sure things don't get beat up. And, Somebody accidentally and dropped I, one. You know, I've got like 400 part numbers, so it's hard uh, yeah. to keep track of all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. And then uh, I got a paint booth in here. A little industrial paint booth. And uh, like to stuff gets shipped out on trucks every day from here. That's crazy. Yeah. We used to be a pretty big dealer of oh, when yeah. the Mazda thing was huge. Back when the RX-7 thing was going. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah. It unfortunately, it hasn't. I'm hoping we can pick up the Honda stuff again. I think that would be nice. So. Yeah. Um, the Because uh, we've used your cages in almost everything we've done. I mean, mm -hmm. I think the only ones I haven't are cars that I bought that are already caged. Mm -hmm. You know, so... Uh, yeah. But uh, now your stuff is uh, obviously SCCA. Mm -hmm. Is that is there an emphasis on that, or is it just? Yeah, that's that's my biggest market is is the, is the road race stuff. Right. SCCA and NASA. Got it. Uh, that's that's the biggest thing we do here. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as custom work, like for your car, we do a little bit, but not a, not a lot. Right. Very few projects like that. Oh, like that Porsche out front. That was that's a beautiful. Deal and, and a few things like that. Well, I, I appreciate that a lot. Now, um, on the uh, on the roll cages, are you selling more bolt-in or more uh, weld-in nowadays? It's, a, it's about 50-50. Okay. It used to be almost all bolt-in stuff, and now we, we sell weld-together kits, mm -hmm. and people are buying that too. Very so, good. So uh, most of our bolt-in stuff is made to fit with full interior cars. Yeah, because it's like show-em stock Show-em stock. That's yeah. what we, and and uh, now people that they, they take all the interior out of the car, the bolt-in one looks a little lost in there because it doesn't fit. It fits nice and snug with the full interior, but take all that stuff out. So then we sell kits so they can do the final fitting and assembly nice. themselves. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So we're, cool. we've had a lot of fun with this car. We've won the championship one year, and we've won the March meet is in a month from now, and that's a, that's a big event for us. And uh, we've won that before, and we won the Hot Rod Reunion, and so we've had some success with this car. Excellent. We took, I took last year off and just... It, it just sat here, but we're going to we're going to hit a few races again this year. So, what era would this have been from? Basically, they stopped using uh, front engine cars in the early '70s. Okay. And you know, like '73 or '4, they were all driver set in the front. Right. That's about how long they lasted. N now, they weren't doing wings like this, were they? In the '70s. They did some canard wings, but probably not quite this size. Uh huh. Uh, and and we have and clearly it's needed. I mean, oh yeah, because no. you see the wings that are on them now, they're just oh yeah. And plus another, there's a lot of rules to, to try to keep the speed down in these cars. We can only use a 12 inch wide tire, and um, and then they have a square inch measurement for the canard wings. It can only be that you can't put a wing on the on the roll cage. Right. Um, and and we and then the engine we have a lot of engine limits too the the size of the fuel pump and the size of the blower and and that type of thing right you know this motor makes probably thirty five hundred to four thousand horsepower and the, you know the big but cars nobody are, ever dynos those things right they just it's just all well kind of I've got a I've got a um, I have a race pack uh, okay. recorder on here and there's a torque sensor on the drive shaft so you can figure it off of that nice yeah nice and uh, you know in the in the big NHRA cars you know they make eight to ten thousand horsepower so we make about half the horsepower they're making, but uh, this car runs like 270 miles an hour, or they run over 300. Yeah. Now, are you down to a thousand feet like they are too now? No, we still run the quarter. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, we run about five, five point five two seconds is our quick run with this car at uh, 268 miles an hour. Wow. And yep. how many runs do you think you have in it? Just curious. I've been running this car, this car is 10 years old. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
Very good. Yep. Oh, cool. Oh, you have the sedan, not the hatchback. <laughs> the sedan? Yeah. Hey guys, we're wrapping up our evening on uh, this little road trip to California, actually over at Bernardo Martinez's house. I don't know if you guys know him. He's uh, driven quite a few of the Hasport cars over the years. This is the Hasport Prelude, although now it's the Bernardo Prelude. Uh, I don't know if you guys have remember this car. I was on the cover of Honda Tuning Magazine. Had a really nice photo shoot. It's back up and running again. Can't wait to see it on the track. Let's just take a quick look at it. And um, I actually have a bunch of photos of this from the house. Uh, we did a lot of the building back at Hasport. Then it came over here to Bernardo. He finished a lot of stuff off. He actually modified the cage. He did all this beautiful wiring in this. He had a friend of his help him out with it. But just to kind of go over the specs of the car, it's a K24 with Cryer internals. It's got a full race turbo kit on it. Puts out about 550 horsepower, although we usually tune it between 450 and 350. Uh, you can check out this really cool duct working I built for it. Uh, you can see the radiator is fully ducted. There's an intercooler in here. Oil, um, uh, the uh, oil cooler. You can see these side, these uh, side vents. They actually feed the brake duct cooling. Uh, it has Moton triple adjustable shocks. You can see here there's a, something to kind of uh, keep the hot air from the engine from getting to the intake air tube. Uh, that way it's not hot air that it's then trying to intercool later. It's set up to run a 255 wide tire on it. It runs like a, an 18 inch wheel. We're probably gonna actually run slicks on it. If you come down here, you can check out the graphics. The graphics are really cool. This was done uh, by Andy Hope. You can see they're doing a K-series engine swap in the car. Uh, this was part of his Circuit Monster brand that he was doing. Uh, really kind of cool stuff. Check out the interior on this thing. This is really cool. There's actually a, a shell of the dash that goes in, but you can see it has uh, individual master cylinders for uh, the front and rear brakes. They're on a bias bar. You can see the reservoirs here. There's also a, a clutch uh, master cylinder inside the car. The steering wheel has been brought back. It uses an aim dash for both data acquisition and also to let the driver know what's going on with everything. Uh, again, the interior is just absolutely beautiful in this car. Uh, the hope was at some point we might even do some work with this and maybe run it in endurance races. So if you come back here, you can see there is a uh, system back here for quickly Filling the fuel, it's got the quick disconnect for the fuel cell. The fuel cell sits up there. If you look inside there, there's actually dual pumps feeding into a surge tank. And then from there, there are dual pumps feeding the engine. That way there's, uh, you know, backup stuff. So if something fails, we're not losing an engine. You'll check out this beautiful uh, trunk. It was mounted by Brian Kono. He does absolutely fantastic fabrication work. He made these mounts for this really beautiful carbon fiber plate that covers everything up. There's all quick disconnects for pulling the hood off. Check out, this is uh, custom wings, uh, wing mounts. This wing was actually done by John McNulty. Uh, he's an aerodynamicist. Uh, you notice what we did though with our wing mounts, we actually cantilevered them back. Because they're cantilevered back, that means we need to run less angle of attack because we don't need as much downforce because these help give us more leverage over the back end. There's a diffuser down underneath the car as well. It has channels, so it uh, helps keep the air organized underneath there. Eventually we're gonna flat bottom the car. This is the driver's compartment. Got a race tech seat. 
uh, fire system. You notice that, again, the steering wheel has been extended back. You can now see the AIM dash right here. You can see the wiring for everything. Everything is on data acquisition. Individual uh, line pressures for the brakes, uh, all sorts of uh, things inside the uh, engine bay, including air temps for the uh, intake air temp before and after the intercooler, pressures as well to check out drops and things like that. Uh, the car is really, really well fitted. I can't wait to see it back on the track again. It uh, is just a, uh, I'm really proud of this car and uh, I'd love to see it back out on the track again. Uh, and he actually has another car he's working on. Let's go check that one out too. We got this pig on a spit too. This is a 88 CRX that Bernardo has been working on uh, to run an F production. Actually, I think it might be uh, an 89 CRX. Anyway, uh, if you look at the inside here, or why don't you step in here, I'll talk a little bit about that. You can see uh, the cage is actually somewhat minimal, uh, other than some really good side protection, the NASCAR door bars, and some extra protection down low for side impact. The cage is uh, inch and a half uh, tubing 090 wall, uh, and more or less minimal, just enough to really stiffen up the car, but not add too much weight. Uh, you can see the framework, the square framework in here. That is actually for the fuel cell. The fuel cell sets beside the driver so that um, the weight is evenly distributed right and left in the car. Uh, come around this way, we'll go to the underside of the car. There are these special constructed pieces right here. This is actually for where the ballast goes. Uh, it's a special compartment to hold the ballast, keep it very, very low keep it inside the rear axle so you don't have a lot of polar moment when you're uh, adding ballast to your car so it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, if you put that ballast too far back, a lot of people will put it back here. Uh, you actually wind up with a car that might actually be kind of ill handling. Um, some other thing is check out this rotisserie. Uh, Bernardo actually made this. Uh, it's constructed of steel, it's got welded together. Check out this cool rear disc brake with the parking brake attachment. So what happens is the car normally would be laid flat. You jack it up, you bolt it on with these uh, brackets. And then once you do that, you can just kind of roll it wherever you want to. And when you get it where you want, toom, push the parking brake on and it locks it in place. Makes it really easy to get in here, do stitch welding on the seam. He's actually replaced one of the quarter panels. Uh, he's gone back here and you can see here, he's actually now widening the rear end so you can put a slightly bigger tire on it. That's legal in F production. Uh, the tires that they run typically, are on, although they're on a seven inch wheel, they're a really wide cantilevered slick that sticks out a little bit beyond that. So um, because of that, you need to have a slightly wider body. And not a lot wider, but slightly wider. The car is gonna be very, very lightweight, very, very stiff. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see this car on the track He's shooting to try to hopefully have it done later this year, maybe run it at Nationals. In the meantime, he's actually running Hasport's CRX uh, and doing some uh, work with some engines and, and trying to kind of tune his setup before, uh, you know, as he prepares this chassis for actually racing. Anyway, that about wraps it up for us. Uh, this has been another episode of Inside Line. Uh, welcome to my life.